Hi everybody, I'm Todd Aaron Smith. I often make sketches in which I don't know what I'm drawing until after I begin to draw it. I just start sketching whatever's on my mind and the drawing takes on a life of its own. Do you ever do that? I think I'm going to do that now. I've taken a page out of my sketchbook and I grabbed a few of my favorite pencils. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, let's do something a little bit different today. I think I'll make a scene that does not rely on thinking about where the horizon line is. You've probably seen that in many drawings, where we need to establish the horizon line and where that is so that we can think about where everything is going to be placed in relation to that horizon. That helps our drawing to have a more realistic 3D feel. Uh, but today, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to begin with some hills, maybe they're mountains. Uh, I'm going to put a little cabin up in the mountains and see how that turns out. Uh, so we don't need the horizon line, as nothing is going to be built on a horizon line. We'll just do a fun little sketch now, and then if we have time toward the end, I plan on doing something extra special. So the first thing I'm doing is finding where everything is. Actually, I don't know if it's finding where it is. It's, it's actually deciding where everything is. Uh, it's our world, so we get to decide what we want to sketch and where we want to sketch it. You may notice that I'm sketching super lightly. I'm barely touching the paper with my pencil here and hoping that it'll show up on camera so that you can see it. But I'm just going extremely lightly, deciding where things are going to be, just sketching along and making it uh, quickly placing things where they, where they should be. Um, so in this case, in this drawing, I'm going to make a couple of mountain ridges, a couple of trees. I love to sketch trees, so I try to add trees to every scene because I just really like drawing them. A cabin, a fence in the foreground with a bird perched on it. Um, I think I'd like it to be a cardinal because I like cardinals. They're such beautiful creatures. And I think cardinals get more attention than any other bird that you might see in your yard. You know, I mean, if you're looking out the window and you see a cardinal, you say, hey, look, a cardinal. <laughs> but you don't, you don't often say things like, hey, look, a robin. Or maybe, maybe you do say that. Birds are amazing creatures. I have a big maple tree in my backyard. And uh, one time I looked out and there was a falcon on one of the branches. That was very impressive. I watched him for a little bit as he sat perched on one of the stronger branches of the tree. Uh, I guess he was just resting because before very long, he just flew away and I never saw him again. But wow, that was amazing. It was an amazing thing to see that falcon up close. Great creature. I'm just continuing to go across here and lay down some marks of where I want to put stuff. These trees are so fun to draw. I love going back and forth. And as you notice, I'm just scribbling. I'm not even trying to draw in any branches. You're getting the idea that there are branches there, uh, but they're just scribble marks. I'm doing it very quickly. I first draw the uh, straight line that is the trunk, I guess, of the tree, but then branching off of that, uh, just make these scribbly lines, very simple. Uh, go back and forth from side to side. I do not want those scribbly marks on each side to be even. I don't want them to be the same at all. If you make your branches on each side of your tree look the same, then you're trying too hard. You should just make them fun and loose, and they shouldn't be even. Trees are not, uh, uh, one half is not a mirror image of the other half. They should be random and, and just be free-flowing. They should just be fun. That's what this is all about. That's why we sketch, is because it's fun. You know, in my spare time, whatever that is, 
I work for a trading card company that makes baseball cards. When I was five years old, I opened my first pack of baseball cards. I was a big baseball guy when I was a kid. And opening those cards out of the pack was just magic. You know, I would go through and sort through them and find my favorite players and my favorite teams. I'd put them in order of my favorites. Did that all the time. Well, it's been quite a few years since I opened that first pack of cards. Uh, But since then, I've opened many, many more. Well, now I'm at the place where I get to do artwork for those baseball cards. Uh, for the same company that made that first pack of cards that I opened all those years ago. And I can't begin to tell you how glorious that really is. Uh, I'm still a baseball guy. And it's just one of the things in my life that I love. And I'm very fortunate and very grateful that I get to do those baseball cards. Um, The thing that I think about is that there are young boys and girls Uh, getting their first packs of baseball cards, and maybe they're finding ones that I created. It makes me very happy to think about that, and I am just so grateful. I'm grateful beyond words every day. When I'm not drawing baseball cards, though, I sketch other things that I love. I love to draw things like the things that we're doing right here on this one. I love to draw trees, as I mentioned. I love to draw mountains. And I appreciate every minute of the day that I have, that I get to, that I get to draw. My advice to you is draw what you love. Do you like fancy cars? Draw fancy cars. Do you like comic books and comic book characters? Then draw comic books and comic book characters. Whatever you love. Cats, flowers, football, music, movies, motorcycles, geography, history, trombones or tacos, whatever it is. Whatever you love, you should make all of those sketches. Um, Make sketches related to those things that you love. It'll make you happy. People have this idea that a good artist can take any subject at all and make it look beautiful. I'm not completely sure if that's true, but what I do know is that sketching is one of the few times when you get to do anything you want, anything you can imagine. Anything that you can dream, you can sketch it and celebrate the love that you have for whatever it is. And if you sketch what you love, I think you will produce better sketches and you will stay motivated. I'm working my way over these lines that I've laid down in the first place. As you remember, I put them down very, very lightly. And now I'm going back over, pushing on the Pencil just a little harder and making it come to life a little bit better. Defining where everything is and working out some details to make it a better drawing. This pencil that I'm using is what I often refer to as my magic wand. I just love this pencil. It's made by Koenor, and the the name of the pencil is Mephisto. And uh, they're pretty easy to get, and they're not very expensive, so I recommend them. They're... It's a great pencil. I use this one all the time. As a matter of fact, I use this very pencil every single day. I'm always sketching with this pencil, and it'll probably last forever. I may never have to buy another one. I really love this pencil, and uh, just the balance that that I feel in my hand as I'm drawing with this one, and the weight of it, and the line that it puts down for me. I use this for everything, including the baseball cards that I draw. I do baseball cards like I mentioned. And I use this to uh, create the base drawing of the card before I color it in. So it has many uses. I use it every single day. And I can't say enough good things about this one. And I hope you'll check it out for yourself. It's certainly worth looking into. Let's see, on this cabin, I want to make a few details here. You want your cabin to not be crooked and going downhill. You want it to be flat. So underneath one side of it, I'm adding, uh, I don't know if they're rocks or bricks or some kind of a foundation to the house so that it can be level when you're in that house. That just makes sense to me. So I'm drawing some things under here that indicate that the house is level. The house itself um, should have some uh, 
lines. Now, as you notice, these lines that I'm drawing are not very straight. I, I'm not good at drawing straight lines. I don't know if you can draw straight lines very well, uh, but uh, I can't draw straight lines, but I don't have to draw straight lines. I'm just having fun sketching, and you don't have to draw straight lines either. Don't worry about that. Now, if I was making a really technical drawing and wanted this thing to be just perfect, I'd probably get out a ruler and make my lines with the ruler, but that's that's not what I'm doing here. I'm just sketching. Uh, so I'm just having fun, and my lines don't have to be straight. Yours don't either. As a matter of fact, if you don't have straight lines that make up your cabin here, it gives the cabin a bit of character. You know, it looks like an old cabin. It might be, uh, uh, it's been sitting there for a very, very long time. Whoever it is that built it, built it many, many years ago. And it's not that it's falling apart, but it is just showing its age. And, and so the roof uh, lines don't have to be straight. Nothing has to be exactly straight. Another thing, though, that you will see as I continue to work this drawing and keep going over some of the things that I've already done, um, it will hide the fact that I'm not using a ruler and just drawing these lines in freehand. And I know, you know, from the outset that I don't draw straight lines very well, but um, as I continue working the drawing, it will cover that and it'll, it'll still look good. And, and you'll see that uh, we'll have a pretty good looking drawing by the time we're done here. Have you ever seen someone else's drawings and think to yourself, boy, this is way better than anything I'm able to do? And you begin to wonder why you even bother to sketch at all when other people are obviously far better artists. Have you ever felt that way when you see somebody else drawing? I think every artist has thought that. You know, you see a better artist and think about how they're so much better than the things that you can do. Or maybe it's exact, uh, the exact opposite. Have you ever seen somebody's artwork somewhere? Maybe in children's books or comic books or wherever and thought to yourself, my goodness, my art is superior to that. How is it that whoever drew this is getting paid to be an artist, and I'm not getting paid to be an artist, when my stuff is just so much better than what I'm seeing here? Have you thought about those things? It can be pretty frustrating, right? Hey, have you ever been to the Museum of Modern Art? Many cities have art museums in them, and some of them feature what is being called modern art. And you stand there looking at this artwork, and you think to yourself, wow, I just don't understand. I was able to do this kind of thing when I was five years old. <laughs> hey, maybe you've heard about the painting that was a big rectangle, big orange canvas, and it had three blurry brighter orange rectangles painted on it. And you wonder, how could this be considered art? And then you find out that it sold at auction for almost $87 million. That actually happened several years ago. Or you hear about someone who has literally duct-taped a banana to the wall, and it sells for $120,000. That really happened. Uh, or here's one. Um, how about taking a white canvas and painting the entire canvas white? Then, that white canvas that you've just painted white sells for $15 million. That really happened, too. So anyway, here's my point. Do not needlessly compare what you do with what anybody else does. It's one thing to be inspired by other artists. That's helpful. But it is not helpful to think about how your art isn't good enough or to think your art is better than the art being sold for a lot of money. That doesn't help you. That will be a never-ending source of frustration. And what we're doing here should not be a source of frustration. It should be something that you love. The goal of sketching is sketching. And that's it. Other things will come with that, of course. 
But sketching is really its own reward. You know, when children are playing, there is no goal. The goal of playing is playing. Children play because they love to play. That's just what they do. Artists create because they are artists. That's what we do. I'm not the greatest artist in the world, and you probably aren't either. But we don't have to be. We are not sketching in order to make the next Mona Lisa. We're sketching because we love sketching. When I first went to art school, I thought I was a pretty good artist. I found out immediately that there are tons of artists that are way better than I. So rather than give up and quit and go find something else to do, I appreciated those artists that I considered better, and I tried to learn from them. I expect there were probably artists who were not as good, uh, who looked at my work, and maybe they were inspired by what I was doing. Maybe. Uh, but hopefully they uh, uh, looked at my art and, and tried to figure out how I did it and did it themselves, because that's exactly what I do. I look at better art, and I try to improve my own. Working on this hillside, I'm just making some scribbly marks on the ground here. I don't know exactly what that is, but I'm guessing that the hillside is uh, rough. It has some big rocks, um, some darker places and some lighter places. And so as I go across, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just kind of loosely scribbling wherever the pencil makes a dark line. That's where it makes a dark line. This is fun. This is uh, really a wonderful experience to get to uh, sketch so loosely as this. And I think overall, as I look over the sketch that we've been making, I think it looks, you know, it looks pretty good. The, uh, the cabin looks like an old cabin up in the hills. Um, I think my trees here are in a good place. I'm just kind of going over now and filling out these branches a bit darker. You don't have to do that. I'm just doing it because it's fun to do that. Everything about this is fun, so uh, I just love to sketch. I hope you love to sketch, too, and I hope you have as much fun as I do with it. Here in the background, you may have noticed that these hills back here are lighter as I begin to make these darker shadows on the hills in the background. I lighten up on the pencil and just draw very loosely. One of the great things about this Mephisto pencil by Koenor is that you can apply pressure on it and make a very nice dark line, or you can lighten up on it and, and make background things that should be lighter because they're in the background. It's pretty much as simple as that. They're in the background, so they should be lighter. Things in the foreground should be darker. These trees that I'm drawing now are kind of in the middle ground um, as they get down to the base of the tree. I'm not sure what all that scribbly stuff is, uh, but it looks right to me. It could be weeds, bushes, whatever, rocks. Now this is uh, a colored pencil. Well, I do have some time to do this, so I'm gonna go ahead and get out a couple of colors. These are polycolor pencils made by Koenor, and I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna color in the entire sketch. I'm just gonna highlight a few things, and I think that'll make a fun drawing. Uh, like I said, my little bird here sitting on the fence is a cardinal, so I've chosen a nice shade of red to color him. And I'll go over that with a few other colors I'll show you coming up here in just a minute. Uh, but I'm just basically putting in these colors, laying them in here. And you don't have to be perfect. This is, again, just sketching. I'm sketching with color now, which I haven't done up to this point. But uh, it's still sketching. Now, he's. I think his beak is probably a, a nice dark yellow color, and you may have noticed, but as I get close to my pencil line, it kind of smudges that pencil up in there and creates some shadows. See how the beak has some shadows towards the bottom? I think I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of yellow on top of the red in some areas, not, not over the whole thing, and I'm not pushing very hard. I'm just being very light with this color. It blends very well. These polycolor pencils blend extremely, extremely well. 
And so I'm going to get my light blue here and go across and do part of the fence that this little bird is sitting on. Uh, I want this fence to look very old and kind of rugged. It's been up in the mountains for a long time and it's experienced winter every year and summer every year. So it's weathered pretty badly. So I'm not going to color in the entire fence. I'm just going to do some parts. I think I'm going to take this. It's kind of a terracotta brown sort of a color, a light brown. It has a lot of orange in this color. And I'm only going to touch over part of the surface, just like I did with the blue. But, but I'm just laying this color over to give it a, a bit more of a feeling of... There should be a couple of different colors in here showing through. And that helps with the age of the fence. Now I'm going to come back to my Mephisto pencil, and I think I'll drop in a couple of details for my cardinal. Um, I don't have a picture of a cardinal here with me. I'm just kind of making this up as I go. But uh, as we go across here, I'm just adding some details on top. You should probably have some feathers and... Uh, the scribbly lines that I'm making on top of him kind of indicate some of that anatomy of the bird. I don't know that much about bird anatomy other than they're amazing, beautiful creatures. I'm just working this however it feels like I ought to work it here, and that's how you should do it too. Just have fun. Let's see his claws. He's kind of on the fence there. A bit more detail on the beak. As we get towards the end of this sketch, it may not be really the end for me, as I may continue working on it, even after I turn off the camera. <laughs> or I might put it back in my sketch pad and look at it again later. I might even make another sketch and then go back to this one. I may add more details or refine parts of what I have now. Maybe I'll put some more colors in different areas of the sketch, although I kind of think that the making just the fence and the bird... Um, in color is, is kind of a nice thing. It really highlights that and makes your eyes go right to it. But it's kind of a living drawing. It's very hard for me to call any sketch finished. And I like to think that they are living drawings because there is no end to them. I can continue working on them at any time. It, it's kind of a funny way of imagining sketching. But that's like that's the way that I like to imagine it. If you've made a sketch and wouldn't mind sharing it, I would love to see it. Find me online. I'm fairly easy to find. Go to my website, which is toddaronsmith.com. My full name, toddaronsmith.com. Um, and you can also link to all of my social media sites through my website. Anyway, I'd love to see what you're sketching. If you wouldn't mind sending me some of your drawings, let me take a look. If you wouldn't mind sharing that. As I go back over and finish this one up, I'm just adding a bit more color. As I looked at it again, I felt like maybe some of my colors weren't quite bright enough. As you look at my fence here, I'm, I'm doing nothing but making the colors a bit darker, adding some colors in places where I may have missed them before. Uh, it's just all fun. It's, it's a... Um, it's just whatever you feel like drawing, however it looks right to you. Just do it that way. I feel like the uh, foundation under my cabin here should be a bit darker, so that's what I'm doing. And we're getting close to being done with this one. I think right outside of the door of the cabin, there should probably be some rocks there. I'm making some areas a bit darker. You can do that all you want, or as little as you want. Continue with your drawing. Make it your own, and you will love the process. As you may notice, I didn't draw anything up in the sky. I left that completely blank, and that's just the way I chose to do it. I could draw in there if I wanted to or not. I think that turned out pretty well. When you sketch this way, there is no end to the possibilities of what you can create. Just let your mind go and put your thoughts on the page. Just draw for the love of drawing. Sketch a creature that lives in the ocean. Sketch something on another planet. Sketch a western scene. Whatever comes to mind, sketch it. 
You can draw whatever you can imagine because you are an artist. See you soon.